Good Tuesday afternoon to you. This weather video is driven by 802cars.com representing 802 Toyota, Twin City Subaru, 802 Honda, and they're all located off of exit 7 on Interstate 89. Belco Weather Hazards Outlook. This uh, moderately active weather pattern is going to continue for about the next seven days. And uh, the main utility threat goes back to more or less spring form, uh, cooler climbs. Uh, we'll see southeasterly gradient winds that will develop late on uh, Friday, basically into Friday night. And then the other issue is uh, freezing levels lower on the backside of a very large cutoff area of low pressure. This will happen along about Monday. And the potential is there for some mountain summit snowfall early next week. does not look like this is going to bring us a utility impact. I think the main concern would be the gradient winds, and even that one doesn't look to be that fierce at this point. We have one good day of dry project weather. That hits on Thursday. Currently, right now, this is the 500 millibar trough. This is the area of low pressure, the cutoff low. You can see there's actually snow falling north of the Great Lakes here. The trough is going to be the main influence for the next several days. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch off 500 uh, millibar heights and then load mean sea level pressure. And this is uh, the surface low. And you can see there's a frontal system here that had moved through. This is what brought us the thunderstorms. This is convective available potential energy uh, southeast off the Carolinas that kind of scoots north and out to sea. There are thunderstorms offshore. But our main issue is going to be with this sort of a lobe as it swings on through and probably not through, uh, oh, probably Wednesday evening or so. We're going to start to see some improvement as an area of higher pressure will begin to build into the region. This area of higher pressure is back over the uh, Yukon, and this is what's going to eventually uh, bring us some clearing skies and better weather for Thursday. And as usual, I want to start by the uh, six hourly panels of the European model and uh, run through those. This is uh, later on today. And into the evening hours, you can see that uh, lobe that I was talking about, that trough, roughly right through here, picks up moisture off the Great Lakes, so it continues. This is valid uh, tomorrow morning or uh, Wednesday morning. Let's go back here. There we go. There's the trough. Moves on through. Bit of a bluster in northwest wind. Then high pressure builds in for a nice day on Thursday. And we have this customer here. 998 millibars, no chopped liver. This is going to be developing and taking a track into Quebec. So at 72 hours, you can see precipitation begins to move in overnight on Thursday night. And uh, it's just a regular rainstorm along with gradient winds. We can see gradient wind gusts along our western slopes of the Green Mountains. Fairly narrow at this point as it looks by the European model. But uh, winds that could exceed 40 miles per hour. So something we'll have to keep a close eye on. Once again, this is the progression. 993 now and you can see some fairly powerful storms go by us uh, over southern New England shoot up uh, off the coast of Maine then we're into some colder air this is wrapping in along the backside and this is where we get into uh, well a little bit of a backward spring situation here so this is valid uh, Sunday night and as you can see we still have showers to contend with and potentially right here, even some more moderate uh, showers to work with on uh, Saturday night. So this will move on by. We'll get on the back side, and we're looking at some wet snowflakes in our local mountains. This is valid 18Z, or about 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Monday. And you can see uh, this is an upper level system, and it's going to be kind of, uh, well, just a little bit too far out to worry about at this point. But stuff we'll have to watch very carefully, especially since we're going to be pretty close to leaf out. Okay, this is our little precipitation we're seeing today. This is the a little bit tomorrow. This is Thursday, and so we're going to see that dry period. The GFS is in very good agreement. And we start to see the uh, Friday weather system. And uh, the Friday weather system is just uh, an obliteration of uh, showery conditions. And you might notice a couple of these whiskers here indicating blue, which is indicating a little bit of wet snow. Uh, so the model is on to this, and the European model is in total agreement with this. And the, the two are in tandem at this point. feel fairly confident about that one. I just don't know about the timing. Okay, total precipitation by the uh, Weather Prediction Center. We got 1.5 inches here. And uh, you might know... 
even more in these particular areas around three inches. These areas in Missouri and Arkansas have just been absolutely hammered, and some of that has been escaping into the Midwest and our neck of the woods here. Things do dry out in the West. It's starting to look more and more like a spring or a late spring pattern. All right, big picture, next five maximum temperature days. We're looking uh, at uh, temperatures running three to six degrees below normal. About three days later, about six degrees below normal on average. So it cools down, warms up out here. And looking at our highs and lows, it's like every other day we see a colder and then a warmer day. So um, temperatures today in the low 60s, upper 50s. Not so cold tonight, and then temperatures tomorrow pretty chilly, around 50 degrees. That's in pretty solid agreement with the European. Then we get a frosty morning on Thursday morning, but a nice day. Temperatures rise up to around 65. That's on a day with just filtered sunshine through high clouds. And then the clouds thicken, and we get into this business here. And this is where it looks like a lot of decoupling uh, in the uh, model run show. So the inaccuracies begin roughly, it looks like, uh, the uh, late part of the the day along about uh, the 5th of May. And just for kicks, looking at a little bit more longer range, this is the uh, European model going out to uh, May 16th, about 15 days. And then this is the uh, GFS. I think the GFS is a little more accurate in the temperature department, especially in this area here, where it, at least it's using climatology with uh, steadily uh, rising temperatures. The European seems to indicate a little bit of a coolness. And you can see the temperatures are well, frosty in some locations, more than likely. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights.